Photography. These are three of the great Civil War photographers. Matthew Brady, Alexander Gardner, Timothy O'Sullivan. And every soldier, as I alluded to, wanted their photos taken, and there were photographers in every soldier's camp, north and south. When a soldier got a break and he could go into town to, to visit uh, friends, go have some libation to, uh, to raise his spirits, I guess the libations would be spirituous beverages, but, but they always would stop and, and have a photograph taken. Another change, aeronautics and warfare on the seas. Thaddeus, uh, Thaddeus Lowe is the father of uh, aeronautics here in the United States. We used those hot air balloons during the Civil War. Soldiers would go up in the gondolas. Uh, an officer with his binoculars could see off in the distance and generally see the Confederate lines of battle or their camps. And they even put telegraphers' keys in those gondolas so they could tap out the old Morse code to the soldiers on, uh, on the ground who would run it to their officers, say, we've spotted the movements of the enemy troops. The ironclad vessels, be it a battleship that we see over here on the left, or be it the submarine. The Confederates created the Hunley uh, form of submarine, and it actually sank a federal vessel. The train, the old locomotives, make a huge impact on the American Civil War. For the first time, large quantities of soldiers can be moved east and west, north and south. When there wasn't enough room in the train itself, soldiers, if you look up here, you can see soldiers way up on the top. They would pile on wherever they could so that they could be taken to their camps, to the battlefields, wherever their destination may be. The photograph at the bottom I find very interesting. The federal government did confiscate property, and here's a federal government train that has confiscated bales and bales of cotton. Each of those bales weighs 500 pounds. The government's going to take that, they're going to sell it to the European markets, perhaps send it up into the New England areas, to the mills there, and, and it's confiscated property of war. Usually you see these uh, photographs on the big barges on the Mississippi or the big steamboats, but I thought to see it on a train is great. And in the upper right corner, for the first time, they will use artillery on railroad cars, on platforms, as you see that large mortar up at the top in the right. And the great bridges and trestles that were built by the military engineers were just incredible engineering feats. The most famous of the engineering units in the entire Civil War for the North was the first Michigan engineers and mechanics, recruited primarily from the western part of the state. Sherman has said he would never be able to have made it down to Georgia and marched on to Savannah in 1864 and 65 without the help of the Michigan engineers. Of course, medical field. We have to look at the changes in medical advances. The photograph at the very top up here, the gentleman seated right here is Dr. John Letterman. John Letterman developed certain advances in moving soldiers from the field. I think most of you in here remember the, the television movie. It was based on the Korean War. Alan Alda was, um, well, I, I can't remember his name, his character's name, but Alan Alda. The movie was MASH. Every week you got to see a new version of MASH. That, that idea was created by Dr. John Letterman in the Civil War. When a soldier is wounded in combat, you bring that soldier back, you treat him immediately, you try to move him to an aid station or a field station to receive additional uh, assistance to stabilize his wounds, and then you take him back to the larger field hospitals. That evolves out of our Civil War, and it's what we use today in Iraq, in Afghanistan, to save our young men and our young women who are fighting in those conflicts. Europeans said that the greatest contribution from our American Civil War to medical science was that very first thing you read up there, the publication of the medical and surgical history of the War of the Rebellion, because it talked about all these other items up here, cures for infection, how you treat uh, uh, fractures and serious wounds, uh, how you establish sanitation and hygiene in camps. All of that is included in that medical and surgical history. The ambulance photographs are up at the top. Uh, on the left, you have a group of uh, Union soldiers who are just going through a drill. How do you pick up wounded soldiers, put them in ambulances, and cart them off? This is, the bottom image up here is actually an illustration depicting what it was like inside a, a uh, train car. 
If the trains were close to a battlefield, you could get the wounded men back, get them into these facilities, get them into the car, and chug them off to the major hospitals where they would receive uh, quicker aid and, and hopefully save some of those lives. Large hospitals were built, both north and south. Here you get a quick view of some of those hospitals. Reconstructive surgery and artificial limbs, prostheses, were also created during the Civil War. You can see the, the young soldier up here at the top, the upper left screen. He's, he's from New York. His lower jaw was shot away in a battle. On the, over the, on the right side of that screen, the doctors have attempted to do plastic surgery. They have created a mouth for him. They've created another jaw so that he can live at least somewhat a normal life. The young soldier at the bottom lost both legs in a double amputation as a result of an artillery shell. But the government, again, came up with prostheses to try to help this man walk and try to live some kind of a normal life. What we do today with uh, our, our young men and women when they come back from Afghanistan and Iraq and, and, and wherever they suffer injuries in the service, much of what they are the, the beneficiary of comes from the research done during the Civil War days. Again, a tie that binds us from the 1860s really to 2010 and 2011. The Sanitary Commission would eventually evolve into the Red Cross. The lower photograph is actually the Michigan Sanitary Commission, one of their camps uh, facilities uh, out in the peninsula of Virginia in 1862. The Christian Commission functioned much as uh, social workers. They provided not only the assistance of spiritual leadership and spiritual guidance for soldiers, but all the things that social workers might do, writing letters home to your mother and father, trying to assist you. You want a book to read? We'll get you a book. You want uh, newspapers and you want a cup of coffee? You could always stop in at the Christian Commission and receive something like that. For women, the influence of women will grow exponentially during the Civil War. When the Civil War began, the professions of teaching and nursing were dominated by men. During the Civil War, there's a great transition. Women became the nurses. The men were out fighting the war. The women became the nurses, and the women became the teachers. Women have dominated those two professions ever since the 1860s. And a few other examples here of, uh, of women in the field during the war trying to assist and help some of the soldiers. The Civil War permeates our national holidays. Abraham Lincoln made no less than five, five proclamations during the Civil War that we have a national holiday as Thanksgiving. The most significant of those was the one he rendered on October the 3rd, 1863. So this year, and especially those of you that are teachers, forget the darn pilgrims. It's Abraham Lincoln who made this a national holiday. We didn't have a country when the pilgrims were here. They set up little settlements and colonies. For a United States holiday, it was Abraham Lincoln who established that on October the 3rd of 1863. Give credit where it's due. The Civil War certainly impacts on, the civil, uh, uh, on, on Christmas and the way we celebrate Christmas. It does today as well for soldiers who are deployed. They want to be home with family and with friends, with their sweethearts, their children. 